Greetings and Happy New Year. We are welcoming in the year 2023. Today is January 1st of 2023. And I got up early this morning and spent some time cleaning up my shop down here. And I ran across a sensor uh, that I didn't even know I had. Uh, I think I purchased it a long time ago. It's a humidity sensor. And uh, it appears to be a very accurate one, a high-quality unit. And uh, because I'm working on a number of projects right now with temperature, humidity, climate controls, etc., uh, I thought, well, now's a good time to do a video on it. I originally purchased it from uh, SparkFun. And uh, it was a rather expensive unit compared to a lot of uh, sensors these days. It was $20.50 in today's dollars. I'm guessing I probably bought it about four to six years ago is the best guess I can do on it. Uh, so I don't know what I paid back then. Uh, but being at $20.50, it's going to be a good unit. And uh, I uh, got to say, it's really tiny. Now, I'll show you here uh, some photos and video of me taking, uh, uh, in soldering in the, the headers for it. And then there's a little protective film over the sensor itself. And that's to uh, uh, keep it fresh, so to speak. Uh, these uh, humidity sensors tend to uh, need to be replenished, I guess is the word they use, or reconditioned. Uh, they apparently maybe take on too much moisture and can't, uh, get rid of it so it needs to be normalized and I'll actually be providing some documentation uh, on that from spark fun from spark fun that shows you how to do it now uh, the interesting thing about this uh, device it's very simple to use uh, there's a lot of I squared C sensors out there and in truth they can be very good and they can be incredibly annoying if they're uh, isn't an existing library for them. Uh, years back, I used to love doing those kind of libraries, uh, figuring out the communications between the devices and all that. And today I feel like uh, maybe I'm just running out of tomorrows, so that isn't important to me anymore. So I prefer to grab a library. In the case of an analog sensor, you're just gonna go into the analog uh, to digital channel and uh, look at the data directly. Now you will have some math to do, uh, but uh, again, that you can get help on that. Um, we're going to start by looking at first the uh, Fritzing diagram on this project or product. And what I want you to do is this would be where most people would start if they didn't think it through carefully. Got your Pico, you got your sensor, run 5 volts into the sensor like it wants, run ground into it, take the output, plug that into one of the three available analog to digital channels. And uh, frankly, that'll work, except for when it gets up to the extreme high humidity. And I believe the data sheet shows it up in around 4 volts is what will come out of this device at 80 or 90 percent relative humidity. And that could damage your analog circuitry in the Raspberry Pi, uh, uh, Pico. Uh, so what I've done is I've showed you what not to do, and then uh, what I think you should do um, with this schematic. And it's, it looks a lot worse, but it's really not too bad. Uh, essentially, we still got ground going to ground on the sensor. I've got 5 volts going into the sensor like it needs. It cannot run at 3.3 volts. They make mention of that in the data sheet. Um, and then I added a device called a level shifter. These are very commonly used. You should always have a, a handful of these available to you uh, for doing uh, interface conversions like this between two voltages. Uh, they will have a high voltage side and a low voltage side. On, the, on both sides, you have to provide the appropriate voltage. So in this case, you'll see that I've got my 5 volt wire here, and that continues over to the high volt input. And then ground should be common to all the devices. Now here I've got 3.3 volts going into the low voltage side, and of course ground as well. 
Now, uh, the way this will work, we're going to take our output signal, pass it into one of the input channels. In this case, they're calling it TX0. The one on my circuit board just simply says HV4. So uh, they'll be labeled differently. And I can see already i got to move that wire over like so. And so this will translate that uh, 0 to 5 volt uh, signal into a 0 to 3 volt analog to digital signal uh, going into the Pico. Now we'll jump over to the data sheet, look at a few items there that are important. Uh, the one thing uh, that I had mentioned was the uh, supply voltage had to be at least 4 volts and a maximum of 5.8 volts, thus we couldn't run it at 3.3 volts. Uh, current supply, the thing takes very, very little uh, current, 500 uh, microamps, uh, so th it's nothing. Um, the voltage output and then the temperature compensation. These two items here, uh, you'll want to dive in a little bit. Uh, I utilize the formulas there and the ones on the Spark Fun reference, which was for an Arduino and kind of had to do a mashup of the two together. Plus, in our case, I had to deal with the 5 volt versus 3.3 volt, because in one of the formulas you got to, or one of the uh, statements you got to reference the 5 volt side, and then the other one you got to reference the 3.3 volt side. You'll see that in the source code, and uh, don't feel bad if it seems a little confusing. It, it certainly was for me working through all three uh, iterations of it before it finally got me data that made sense. Um, here they're showing uh, uh, the relative humidity and the functional range of this device. Uh, again, uh, storage environment for non-condensating uh, and so, or condensing and so on. Um, but this is kind of the one that uh, is something we should be aware of. Uh, this is your relative humidity from 0 to 100%. Um, most of the world's probably in the 20 to 80% range. Uh, and then uh, that would take you from, at 0, it would take you from, oh, about 0.7 volts all the way up to about 3.7 or 3.8 volts. And uh, that's, of course, above our 3.3 volt limit that we really want to follow on the Pico. And then this chart is showing similar information. Nice thing about it, the device is linear, so as uh, relative humidity goes up, voltage goes up, and they follow a very parallel path. Uh, but that's it for that. Uh, I mentioned about reconditioning these things. There will be this data is actually, I copied it into the source code, and I'll include a copy of this sheet and a copy of this sheet, the data sheet. Uh, in the package of goodies that I put up on our companion website, making stuff with chrisdayhot.com, so you can download all the stuff and get a jump start on uh, learning about these devices. Uh, with that, um, we will head over now to the source code. Uh, well, let, let's do one more thing before that. I just want to kind of give you a walk around uh, on the actual device, and it is on a breadboard, just like I had it in the uh, schematic. Uh, Might have used different wire colors. Uh, but nonetheless, this is the sensor. As you can see, it's relative size to the Pico. It's very tiny. Here's the voltage divider, and this is a, a a quad unit. It can handle four different uh, conversion uh, channels. Uh, and these are real, real common. I, I think you pick them up for pennies on a dollar, it seems like. Uh, I don't know how people make this stuff that cheap. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, somewhere up there, I got a whole drawer full of them. Uh, and some are bi-directional, some are unidirectional, etc. Uh, like this one uh, is, I'm going to say, I would trust it only as unidirectional, going one way, not both ways. Uh, but nonetheless, you got your voltages going where they need to, and I'm showing analog signals in the yellow wires. Just looks kind of spooky there compared to the schematic uh, that we were working with. Uh, in the code, I got a little bit of commentary in there so that we can relate to which sensor it is, and I'm actually going to drop off the 431. It is for the 43, 4030 uh, version of the sensor. 
And uh, essentially, we're going to convert the sensor reading into relative humidity uh, using an equation from the data sheet. And that's what I'm referencing. And also, uh, and Spark Funds website on their connection. Whoops. Oh, well, we'll fix that. Can't have uh, bad punctuation, right? There. All right. Now everybody's happy. Um, but anyhow, and then I got a note here for down below, more commentary on how to deal with that uh, reconditioning at, when, it, when it's necessary. I personally have never done it. Um, I've never had a device last long enough where I had to do it. Uh, but the code's relatively short. Um, we're going to import the machine library, and I'm using the microtime uh, uh, library, time library. We're going to create an object called the humidity sensor from the class of machine dot analog to digital channel uh, number two. And of course, you can use any one you want. We're going to go into our typical uh, endless loop that you'd have in a micro Python or any microcontroller program. Uh, we're going to take a reading from the sensor. And uh, the thing to remember, uh, it is a, the Pico is a 12 bit, uh, uh, resolution, but they map it out to 16 bits. So our range of output from the ADC is 0 to 65535. Uh, an Arduino, I think, is maxes out at 1024, so their resolution is much uh, smaller, we'll say. Um, our first calculation is to calculate uh, the voltage out coming from the device, taking that raw reading, putting it into a voltage, and then that's how we're going to perform the calculations to convert that voltage into uh, relative humidity. And then we're going to say two different types of relative humidity. Uh, for just a rough calculation, we're going to take our voltage out and then put it through this constant, the point 0.0062, and multiply that times our uh, supply voltage to the device. Uh, your, your output of 5 volts on the Pico is about 5.1 volts. And then you're going to subtract another constant from that uh, calculation. Uh, this next line, I'm giving uh, the temperature in Celsius. I'm setting it at 20 degrees. And uh, in my environment here, in this shop, it's about 68 degrees. Uh, as mentioned, we're January 1st, so in the, the deep of winter. And relative humidity here, uh, up until two days ago, has been probably below 40%. Uh, but the last few days, it's been rather foggy in the area and uh, rainy and damp. So the humidity's coming up. So we're still right around that 40% uh, percent relative humidity mark. But accurate um, relative humidity is temperature dependent. So if you're not uh, coupling this device with an onboard uh, uh, temperature sensor of some sort, uh, just pick a, a variable or an amount that's uh, typical of when you'd be wanting to monitor the relative humidity. For me, this is literally uh, the first stage of creating a device that will help me monitor um, re relative humidity in the two shop areas. Uh, I get a lot of rust problems if I don't stay on top of it. And so I'm looking for creating a device to help remind me when to start up the dehumidifiers and so forth. Um, and then finally, that's our raw or our rough uh, humidity, uh, relative humidity. And then this will be the actual. Uh, it goes through a little more refinement, and that uh, uh, that refinement takes into account the actual temperature in degrees Celsius. And for those of you uh uh, in other parts of the world or here in the U.S. wondering, well, 20 is what? It's 68 degrees Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit. 68 Fahrenheit, 20 Celsius. Uh, and that's the calculations. And like I say, it was a little bit of a challenge getting through uh, the data sheet formulas and the Spark Fun ones, uh, especially having to deal with uh, the Arduino being uh, a lower resolution, up to 1024, we're, we're 655.35, and then adding into that the 3.3 volts and 5-volt conversion. Nonetheless, 
I got it all worked out for you. If you want to struggle through it, have at it. Um, and then after that, I just print it out. And, uh, and that's just for the demonstration here. And then I just do that about every quarter of a second. Anything faster than that, uh, relative humidity in, in the real world doesn't change that fast. So anything faster is truly just a waste of time. So we'll let it run. Oh, got to plug it in. That helps a lot. Um, found out that Picos just won't run without electricity. So we plug it in. Give it a minute to make the beep beep. And we'll run it. And interestingly, it's reading about 50% humidity right now. And uh, earlier this morning, it was at about 42%. So I'm not exactly sure why it's, it jumped up so high. Um, I know uh, the shop's been open and closed a number of times, so maybe the humidity has come up. Uh, but in reality, that should be reading about uh, 40 to 43 percent, best I can guess. Um, so I'm not going to get too too excited about the difference here. Uh, furthermore, uh, with uh, breadboards and the way the circuits are, you can get differences just by bumping the wires around a little bit. But here we're showing our relative humidity, temperature compensated, uh, is at about that 48-49%. And I just did wiggle the wires, and now the sensor is reading correctly. Uh, breadboards and these jumper wires don't always have the best connections for analog reading. Uh, so we're back on track. Nothing mysterious happened there. So that kind of gives you an idea how to work with this sensor. Um, there's going to be probably uh, some other sensors coming up in the near future. I'm doing another video on one with, the, I think it's called the DHT-11. It's temperature and humidity. Uh, but these can all be very helpful uh, in various projects for you to ascertain certain environmental uh, uh, variables that might need to be taken into account of what you're trying to do. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Again, Happy New Year, and I certainly hope that your new year will be a wonderful one coming forth here. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.